your business partner is surprised that you choose this luxury sports saloon. Have you got the right business partner? I'm on my way to Paris for the weekend. It's only about three hours away by Eurostar. Of course, I could have gone to the country for the weekend. But I had to decide, would I rather have lunch in Paris or lunch by the motorway? Lunch in Paris or lunch by the motorway? Lunch in Paris by the motorway? Paris <coughs> motorway. Go for lunch in Paris or Brussels from only 59 pounds return. Deutsche Ingenieure stellen tolle Reifen her, aber miese Dachterrassen. Continental Tires, German Engineering, where you need it most on a car. You'll find something new about Andrex. We put even more soft fibers into every sheet, so you can really feel the difference. And to prove it, here's an expert to express how she feels. Just how much softer was that? Feel for yourself the softest Andrix ever, now with more than ever before. If you're 25, I probably look just like another boring businessman. You'd be wrong. I'm your guardian angel. 30 years from now, you could be living off a boat with a little help from me or running that little cheese shop in the Cotswolds, or writing the novel, or being the next Capability Brown, or simply not catching the 832. I'm Peter Davis, head of Prudential, and whether it's with pensions, savings, investments, or mortgages, I can help you change your life. Peter Davis, the man from the Prue. Yesterday's shepherd's pie is still there because it isn't always removed by some traditional detergents. But now there's new finished double action tablets, a unique two-layer tablet for superior cleaning. The blue layer penetrates and softens tough dried on food, so the white layer can clean to a brilliant shine. The results? See for yourself. Double action finish. Now in a new bigger value pack. Any luxury car will make a statement about you. But why settle for a cliché? Yes! He plays NBA. You'll be watching NBA Raw, Mondays at 11 on 4. You want answers on a plate? Well, this is self-service. There are many ways to see the outback from Alice. You can go on day trips in air-conditioned coaches and get back to the comfort of your hotel at night. You can hire a four-wheel drive and take off on your own, never forgetting that this is harsh country. We hired a Mercedes Unimog, complete with driver and cook and four days provisions to boldly go and sleep under the stars. Just hang a left of the traffic lights at the bottom. Out. Yeah, well, unless, unless any of the other guys want to use a tent. But well, these are used to Hilton hotels, you know. I mean, I don't know whether it's going to be all right with them to sleep out in a riverbed. Would it be okay with you? 
Yeah? Okay. First time for everything. He's nodded for us. Fine. Right, well, that's all right. So Otherwise, we'd have to take flatter ground, you know, with a bit of grass well, around. It is, a, it is a bit lumpy. I mean, well, it's a river bit, mate. It's a river bit. This is your bed, by the way. This one. Oh, you see Australians in London with them tied onto the back of their backpacks. They keep on getting stuck indoors on the northern line. It's fish and potatoes and corn and broccoli and fruit flan. That's what we're having. Bob, you said the flies would be gone by now. No, I said after sunset, the sun has to set and it hasn't yet because it's still... Well, you can see it just going down over there. If you drove into Alice Springs and no one had warned you and you just drove down the street, you'd think everyone was crazy because respectable looking people walk along the street and go... So any, any old wood will do for coals, but this is just for the... Uh, There's wild animals out there. The you could wander and I could make sure no one nicks the fire. Oh, all right. You've got a good job, isn't it? It's a swag, is it? Yeah, yeah. So it's a sort of mo mobile bed or something? Yeah, it's, all right. exactly, it's exactly what it's a mobile bed. Do the snakes get in them? Uh, Not that I'm worried about them, obviously. The, th the thing about being out here, the, the, the thing that's impossible to convey is like the, the hugeness of the sky. And the tranquility of the place. I mean, the only thing that's actually disturbing the tranquility of that. Great moth. What the one. bloody hell was that on my. <laughs> was it? Yeah. Yeah, it didn't bother me, though. No. I think that's far enough, isn't it? No, no, no. It won't do anything. Oh, his friends are coming now. <laughs> God, it's happy hour for moths. <laughs> All these macho Australians keep on trying to wind me up with these stories of terrifying snakes and spiders. <laughs> I've been here a week and I haven't seen one. I'm off to bed. Ah, good night. Well, you have to get up at six in the morning because that's the way the flies like it. Now, last night, I naively thought when the generator went off, we were going to have a nice sort of peaceful evening under the stars. Not so. The generator was rapidly superseded by some Olympic quality snoring. Nobody's owning up, but the clever money's on the director. Anyway, come on. Let me show you around the place. Kitchen. Utility room. Living room! Toilet with designer toilet roll holder. And bathroom. Oh, this is fantastic. How deep is it here, Bob? Oh, it's about 100 feet in the middle. Is it really? Yeah, it's yeah. Well, at least we're safe here. No sharks. Yeah, and it's mating season, so the crops won't bother you. The crops? Well, unless they finish mating early, that is. I'll just go in. Yeah, just be careful of the snakes on the rocks here, mate. I don't know why I let these Australian guys get to me. Statistically, the chances of me seeing a snake are virtually non-existent. Apart from beating us at cricket, there's nothing the Australians love more than tormenting the ponds with tales of spiders and snakes. They'll tell you that under every toilet seat lurks some unspeakable terror, waiting to impale itself on flesh that has never seen the sun. And out there in the bush are any number of things intending to do you harm. Travelling in the Northern Territory makes you realise how vast this country is. We've been driving all day and this is the only car we've passed. Behind me, in fact 1,540 kilometres behind me, is Adelaide. This is the Gan Railway, named after the Afghan Camelliers, who this replaced as the main direct trade route to Alice Springs. At the moment, only one train a week runs on this track. So, if you're looking for a leisurely way to pass your retirement years, train spotting in the Northern Territory could be for you. Goss's Bluff. That's where we're spending tonight. Only trouble is, it's two hours' drive away. It's 110 degrees in the shade, only there isn't any. 
It's at times like this I wish I could fly. 130 million years ago, a comet struck Earth here with tremendous force, making a crater five kilometers in diameter. The Aboriginal word for this place means sun, walk, fire, devil, rock. There's just one well-concealed way in. This is Goss's Bluff. The freak rains just before our visit meant that there were a lot of flies about. There are always flies in the bush in summer, but not nearly so many as this. In winter, they virtually disappear. They don't bite, but they can be a bit of a nuisance. You know, a lot of people badmouth these flies, but uh, I don't think you can fault them. I mean, they're, they're friendly little chaps, aren't they? Is that really what it's for? Yeah. And it's been here all this time? Yeah. Why didn't you tell me? Just think you want to look stupid on the telly. Give it here. I'm going to put it on. Look, I know it may not be much as a fashion statement, but who cares? There's no flies on me. Come on, Bob. Let's go for a nature ramble. We hadn't intended this to be a safari, but we saw emus and kangaroos, wild horses and eagles, and some smaller stuff. But not that small. Now, you, you might think that Parenti sounds like a coffee bar in Melbourne. But in fact, it's the name given to these gigantic lizards, known as Varanus gigantus. And we've just seen one in the bush over there. Bob's gone to have a look at it. But he's told me that they bite. So I'm staying here behind this tree. It's a nice tree, isn't it? It's got leaves wooden bits that uh, are known as branches in the business and it doesn't bite which is a big plus as far as I'm concerned. Bob and I have spent the last week exploring places like this and these places are so remote and so beautiful that each time you come somewhere like this you feel you must be the first people to have been here but of course we're not. I mean the indigenous people were here 40,000 years before the Europeans and there's evidence of it everywhere. We just wandered in here this morning to film in the canyon and then here on these rocks are carvings everywhere. You won't find them marked in any guidebook. In fact, this place wasn't even marked on our map. Interested in water sports? Here's a short guide to the rivers of the Northern Territory. This is the Davenport River. This is Rundles Creek. And this is the Todd River where it gushes through Alice Springs. And this is the Fink River, the oldest unchanged river in the world. Now you'll notice in all these rivers there's no sign of any aquatic activity whatsoever. So, if there's no water, how do they know they're rivers? Well, this is a country of extremes. Up there in that tree, you can see the debris left at the high water mark last time this river flooded, which was in 1988. So, if this is the oldest river in the world, then over here, where the highway is part of the river, must be the oldest road in the world. Funny that. I always thought it was the A1 between Scotch Corner and Darlington, just near that little chef. This is what's left of the gold rush town of Altunga. A hundred years ago, it was the biggest settlement in the Northern Territory. Men walked here, all the way from Adelaide, pushing their possessions in wheelbarrows. Gah, they must have been hard men who worked here. Look at this gym equipment. I found this quotation in the song lines by Bruce Chatwin. One of the few moments of happiness a man knows in Australia is that moment of meeting the eyes of another man over the tops of two beer glasses. And it's true. One of the great pleasures of Australia is its bars. But an even greater pleasure is its people. It's just a pity sometimes that there aren't more of them about.